Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at metal reactivity and electrochemical cells. First of all we're going to look at the reactivity series. This is a series of metals where they are ordered from most to least reactive based on their experimental reactions with oxygen, water and acid. You may have carried this out in class. The first four metals are very reactive, potassium, sodium, lithium and calcium. They will all react violently with water, acid and very easily with oxygen. The next set of metals, magnesium, aluminium, zinc and iron, do not react with water but they will still react with acid and oxygen. The next set of metals where there's only two is copper and silver. They don't react with acid but they will react with oxygen over time. And then finally gold which shows no reactivity. If we have a look at this list we can see how we can extract the metals. The less reactive they are the easier they are to, to, to extract from their ores. This means that the least reactive metals were found a long time ago and often uncombined with anything else in the earth. The more reactive metals were found more recently as we required electricity to extract them from their ores. This list here shows you which metals require what sort of conditions to be extracted. Aluminium upwards require electrolysis. This is where we take electricity and we split the positive metal ion away from the negative, usually oxygen ion. This middle section, zinc to copper, require heating with carbon or carbon monoxide to be extracted. And then finally, silver and gold, if they are combined with anything, you can simply heat them up and they will be extracted by heat alone. Let's have a look now at reactions of metals. The first reaction we'll look at is displacement. Displacement occurs where a more reactive metal is placed into a solution of less reactive metal ions. The more reactive metal oxidizes and loses electrons to become an ion in solution. The less reactive metal that was in solution gains these electrons through a reduction process and then becomes a solid. So we have two potential reactions here, a piece of copper being placed in magnesium sulphate and a piece of magnesium being placed in silver nitrate. If you were to carry out this reaction, you would find that the copper and magnesium sulphate do not react. Copper is less reactive than magnesium, so the oxidation and reduction processes cannot happen. However, if you were to place a piece of magnesium into silver nitrate, you will see pieces of silver being formed around about where the magnesium was. This is because the magnesium will oxidize. You have your magnesium solid and it will become magnesium ions in solution, losing two electrons. The silver ions that were originally in solution will gain these electrons to form a silver solid. We can combine these two equations to form a redox equation. We need the electrons to balance, so we have to multiply the silver equation by two first. This means that two silver ions will react with one magnesium atom to form two silver atoms plus one magnesium ion. The nitrate ions are spectator ions in this reaction. Pause the video now and have a look at these three reactions. In which of the tubes will displacement occur? To be able to do this, you need to look at page 10 of your databook. This will show you the electrochemical series. So looking at these three reactions, we have a piece of calcium going into a solution of zinc. Calcium is more reactive than zinc, so will displace. We then have a piece of zinc going into a solution of aluminium. Zinc is less reactive than aluminium, so will not displace the aluminium. And then finally we have a piece of aluminium going into a copper solution. Aluminium is more reactive than copper, so will displace the copper from solution. The final reaction of metals that we're going to look at is that of electrochemical cells. The most simple cell that can be made is where we take two pieces of metal as electrodes and we put them into a solution which is our electrolyte. So here we have a copper electrode 
our electrolyte solution, which is a salt solution, and completes the circuit to allow the ions to move. And then we have a zinc electrode. We can use page 10, the electrochemical series, to work out which direction the electrons will flow. They will always flow from the more reactive metal to the least reactive metal. Zinc is higher up than copper, so will be oxidised, and the electrons will flow from the zinc to the copper. The further apart the two electrodes are, the larger the voltage will be. A more sophisticated way of setting up an electrochemical cell is to use two half cells. As we saw previously, putting a piece of metal into a solution of metal can cause a displacement reaction. If you put your two electrodes into a solution where one of them will have a displacement reaction, then your electrochemical cell will not work. A way to combat this is to use the two half cells. In this case, we have our zinc electrode that we had before, and this time it's in a solution of its own ions. It cannot react. We have a copper electrode, this time in a solution of its own ions, so it cannot react. The two electrodes are connected through a voltmeter and wires. However, we need to complete the circuit. To do this, we have an ion bridge. An ion bridge is just a piece of paper or filter paper soaked in a salt solution, which allows balance of charge between the two beakers. As before, we can look in the data book to see what direction the electrons will flow through the wires. The electrons will flow from the zinc to the copper as zinc is more reactive than copper. With a half cell, you can carry out electrochemical cells with non-metallic elements. You will see on the electrochemical series that there are some non-metallic elements there, such as chlorine and iodine. These work in exactly the same way, except you would have carbon rods for your electrodes, and then the solutions would be those of the non-metallic elements. You would simply look to see which one is higher up, and that would be the one which would be oxidised. We're going to write out the equations for the oxidation and reduction and uh, redox processes happening in this electrochemical cell. So we have our zinc electrode, which will lose electrons to become Zn2+. These electrons will travel through the wire to the copper electrode. The copper electrode will then have a negative charge in it, to which the copper 2 plus ions will be attracted. The copper 2 plus ions that are in solution will pick up two, ele two electrons to, perform, to become copper solid on the surface of the copper electrode. The overall redox that is happening is our zinc plus the copper 2 plus to become zinc 2 plus ions plus copper solid. The zinc will lose electrons to become zinc ions within the solution, so this electrode will eventually become smaller whereas the copper 2 plus ions will form copper solid on the surface of this copper electrode. If you were able to run this for long enough, the blue colour caused by the copper 2 plus ions would eventually go away. The point at which we have no more zinc electrode left and no more copper solution would be when our battery, our electrochemical cell, would stop working. If you're unsure as to how to write out the equations, have a look in the electrochemical series. It's written as a series of reduction equations. You would simply look for your two metals or non-metals, find which one is higher up and you flip that one over. So in this case the zinc was flipped over and the copper was left as it was. You multiply where required to get the right number of electrons and then combine. I have another video relating to this which I will leave as a card in the corner for you and link down below in the description box. Pause the video now and have a look at these two cells. Which one will have the largest voltage? What direction will the electrons travel in each cell? And what will the reduction, oxidation and redox equations be for each of these cells? First of all, looking at which one will have the largest voltage. If you look for the order of the elements involved on the electrochemical series, you'll first find aluminium, then nickel, then iron, iodine, then silver. That means that aluminium and silver have the largest difference and therefore the largest voltage will be produced by this cell. Focusing on that cell now, 
What direction will the electrons flow? They'll flow from the more reactive metal aluminium to the least reactive metal silver. If we look in the electrochemical series, we'll find that aluminium is higher up, and therefore that is the equation that we need to flip over. So your aluminium will start as a solid, that is our electrode. It will lose three electrons to become three plus and three electrons. You'll find that in the data book. Silver is lower down and you can just write the silver equation as you find it in the data book. So your silver ions in solution will gain one electron each to become silver. This means that when we combine them, we need to multiply this last equation by three before we combine. That means that our overall redox process will be aluminium plus three silver ions to give us Al3 plus plus three silver. Finally, let's look at our last electrochemical cell. So this one involves a non-metal element. So you need to have a look at where you find nickel and where you find iodine. Nickel is higher up than iodine, so the electrons will flow from the nickel to the iodine. Again, we can use the electrochemical series to help us write out the equations. So nickel will become Ni2 plus plus two electrons. Iodine solution will gain these electrons to form two iodide ions. We can then combine these two equations to form our redox equation. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now!